Tonight, it's all about the Berkey. Tens of thousands are in Hayward right now, preparing for the big race, how the athletes are getting ready in the warmer weather. And not done with politics. A familiar face in Duluth announces he's running for a county commissioner's seat in West Duluth. And later, defying the odds, Minnesota's longest-serving EMT is right here in Duluth, how he's been able to be on the job 10 times longer than the average. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Any given year, February can bring the coldest of cold or the most mild winter temperatures in the region. Yeah, sure can. And this year, Berkey participants are dealing with the latter. CBS 3's Ryan Campo spoke with skiers about how they're preparing for these warmer-than-usual conditions. Yeah, guys, we are currently inside the Berkey Expo here in Hayward, where skiers are picking up their bibs, grabbing a couple snacks or two, hanging out with those that they are skiing with tomorrow. But most critical out of all of that, getting the extra wax they need due to the recent temperature change. Now, I caught up with some that are hitting the track and how they are expecting things to go. By the time the thousands of skiers hit the Berkey course, their training will be done and gear will be ready to go. But just how big of a role does weather play on Nordic skiing athletes? A lot of people waxed their skis three days ago for a temperature that isn't going to be here for a while. So there's going to be some waxing challenges this morning. For one competitor who was the winner in the women's classic event last year and has been skiing since she was little, says warmer weather plays huge dividends on what skis she uses. Oh, well, I classic ski, so it can determine if I use skins, normal skis, or zeros and then what type of kick wax I use. Now with this warmer weather comes the need to pay attention to forecasts to get the up-to-date temperature. There was a little confusion. Today was supposed to be much warmer than it is right now. But, uh, and so some people have waxed warmer than, than it should have been. There are going to be some slow skis at first, and then they'll pick up as the temperature warms up. Regardless of how much wax skiers have on their skis, the 29-kilometer race is one that you still can enjoy alongside some of your friends or family members. Now we will be keeping a close eye on just how cold temperatures get throughout the evening and into the morning ahead of the American Berkey Biner 2020. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Oh, that looks like fun. Another big Berkey event drew out some major competitors today. Almost 4,000 skiers raced 29 kilometers in the Cor de Lopet. Those participating took off from the OO Trailhead to downtown Hayward. Just about anybody could finish this thing, and there's such fantastic support along the way. To be able to ski a point to point and really experience a cross country experience, that's what this sport is about. And the Prince Hacken 15K also took place today. And Berkey events don't even end this weekend. In fact, they stretch all the way to March with the Fat Bike Berkey. That's when athletes race the Berkey course, but on fat tire bikes. If you want to see it for yourself, it's being held March 6th and 7th. Well, believe it or not, it's almost time to get those ice houses off your favorite lake in Minnesota. The Minnesota DNR has drawn a line running east to west within the state that determines the date your house has to be removed. If you're north of the line, your house has to be off the lake by March 16th. If you're south of it, your house has to be off the lake by March 2nd. After removal dates, houses may be on the ice between midnight and one hour before sunrise, but only when occupied or attended. We'll have more details on exact locations on our website, cbs3duluth.com. The Duluth Drift Toppers have finished repairs on their snowmobile grooming machine thanks to a number of donations from the community. The volunteer group that grooms the snowmobile trails in Duluth asked for financial help earlier this month after their one and only machine broke down. Club members said the repair would cost around $5,000. They are also looking to raise more than $30,000 to match a grant proposal so they can eventually buy a new grooming machine. The president of the organization says they were able to finish repairs on their old machine late yesterday and are ready to take it back on the trails. Dave's here with a quick look at the weather. I gotta say, stepping out this morning compared to yesterday morning felt like a whole new 
world. It was so warm today. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that this morning as well. You know, on Fridays I have to get up early and go to the Lake Superior College Flight Center and teach meteorology to those budding pilots. And it's like, it's still cold right on the ground, but there's warm air up above. Yeah. That was actually a perfect combination. It made winter quite tolerable. Hopefully the temperatures stay tolerable for the weekend events here, which do include, of course, the Berkey. And again, up in my neck of the woods in Ely, great sled dog race begins tomorrow morning about 9.30 at the softball fields. And in between, a lot of snowmobiling going on. It's going to be warmer. That high pressure cell will keep the southerly flow coming into our area. And that means, indeed, air temperatures are going to be on the mild side. If you thought nine above this morning was mild, Kristen, getting out in the, into the car, out of the house, it'll be double that tomorrow, roughly 16. And then towards 36, even 37 degrees as we go through the rest of the weekend. Pretty toasty, but it won't stay that way forever. We will start to dial down by midweek next week. And that's when our next snow chance is coming, and I'll show you all these counts here coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Roads are still blocked off outside Superior's Husky Refinery tonight after a facility issue forced workers to evacuate. Husky officials say there's a concern over a tower's structural integrity. They first noticed it around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That's when they evacuated the campus and closed off Stinson and Hill Avenues outside the refinery. Those roads are still closed tonight and workers have not returned to Husky. But city leaders say there is no risk or danger outside the area that's closed. We're told even if the tower were to fall, it would not lead to a fire or explosion of any kind. We now know what caused a logging truck to spill its load on Duluth's can of worms. State Patrol is blaming it on an unsecured load. It happened around 4.15 Monday afternoon at the I-35 southbound ex exit off Highway 53. Logs covered that area for several hours, causing traffic to be reprouted. A Duluth home builder has filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy after falling behind on payments. According to court documents filed on February 13th, Calzion Construction LLC's total liabilities amount to $753,000. 68 entities, including dozens of local area businesses, are listed as creditors. Some are owed as much as twenty to $25,000 thousand dollars. Until recently, Calzion was the primary company doing work for Wausau Homes, which provides custom-built homes. Hacker Construction is now listed as the general contractor for Wausau Homes in the Duluth area. The owner of Calzion and his attorney declined to provide comment. We're hearing from Duluth City Council President tonight regarding the suspension of the city attorney. Gunnar Johnson was placed on administrative suspension last Wednesday. City officials have not said why, saying they can't comment because it's a personnel matter. Today, Council President Gary Anderson says he has limited information as well. He added all he knows is that issues within the attorney's office are being looked into. While Johnson's salary is paid with taxpayer dollars, Anderson says the lack of information released from the city is appropriate. I think that Protecting a person's privacy, or, you know, which is in this case, it's Attorney Johnson's privacy, as well as the privacy of the people in um, the attorney's office. So I, um, I respect that. There's uh, um, the mayor and the administration are doing what they can to really do the right thing for the good of all. Anderson added he believes Johnson is on paid leave. He says there's no specific timeline on when the matter will be resolved. Former Duluth City Councilor Noah Hobbs isn't done with politics. He announced today he's running for a seat on the St. Louis County Board. Hobbs, who lives in Duluth's Denfeld neighborhood, announced his intentions in a social media post today. He lost his at-large city council seat in the November election after serving for one term. Hobbs touts his work addressing the city's housing shortage and helping pave the way for ride-sharing options as some of his biggest accomplishments during his time on the council. Hobbs is seeking the third district commissioner seat currently held by Beth Olson. Olson, the only woman on the board, announced earlier this month she would not seek re-election. Minnesota's attorney general contends the Mille Lacs Indian Reservation still exists. In a legal filing this week, Attorney General Keith Ellison backed the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe's assertion that the band has 61,000 acres across the south shore of Mille Lacs Lake. Governor Tim Walz is in support of Ellison's move. Ellison's statement attempts to reverse more than a century of state policy. Meanwhile, Mille Lacs County officials believe the band has only a few thousand acres.
The Wisconsin State Assembly has passed a bill designed to combat PFAS pollution in drinking water. The measure would require UWM to study PFAS pollution and the DNR to develop emergency rules for certifying laboratories to test for the presence of PFAS. The DNR would also have to test for the chemicals in water systems and private wells near contaminated sites while providing clean drinking water for people in those areas. The Assembly passed the bill 62 to 35 early this morning. The measure now goes to the State Senate. Converting Duluth's first street from one-way travel to two. That project is something the Duluth City Council is set to consider Monday. They could vote on whether to approve a contract with an engineering company to help execute the conversion. Still no word on when the conversion could happen, but the goal would be to eliminate confusion and increase safety. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, why a local EMT is receiving national accolades in Washington, D.C. After 33 below yesterday morning in Hibbing, today's high temp here in Hermantown, 36 above. Big temperature swing towards the warm side, which will be with us through the weekend. But next week, we may step back a little bit temperature-wise. When will it happen and how low will we go? Two things we'll talk about coming up after our break. Everything is on sale, plus no interest financing until 2023 during our President's Day sale at Home Furniture. This sofa with throw pillows is now just $5.99 and free shipping when you spend $4.99 or more. The President's Day sale at Home Furniture. Friday, March 6th, in the Otter Creek Event Center, Black Bear Casino Resort brings you a very special live appearance from the happy medium, Kim Russo. Star of the number one hit series, The Haunting Of, TV host, best-selling author, lecturer, and most sought-after medium worldwide. An evening of live readings and audience interaction, helping to achieve a more balanced and peaceful life. Tickets available at the Players Club or online at blackbearcasinoresort.com. Make the bear your place. This winter, beat the cold with an up north hat. Michigan made. These warm hats are expertly stitched with soft fabric, perfect for protecting you from whatever Mother Nature throws your way. Visit our website today at upnorthhats.com. At Miller Hill Subaru, we believe in the mission of saving homeless pets and placing as many as possible in loving homes. Nearly 800 pets have been given a second chance through the Subaru Love a Pet Adoption Event in the past 12 years. We sponsor rescue groups near and far who share in this mission. And it's clear our amazing community supports adoption, welcoming these deserving pets to their forever homes. This is what collaboration and commitment to our community means to us. Here's the scary truth. It's easy to say beat Trump. It's going to be harder to do. We need someone who has the clout, toughness, and record of getting things done. Mike Bloomberg, who brought a city back after 9-11 and has taken on bully after bully to do what's right. Because the first thing that needs to get done is winning. And that means beating the biggest bully of all. The gloves are off, but the fight is on. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. When severe weather hits... Two to CBS 3. Tonight at 10, we'll be out here in the storm. For up-to-date coverage morning and night. Oh, stay away from here. Um... Live local weather coverage on CBS 3 Duluth. Home World Rugs Progressive Rug Sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Up to $500 off sale prices on any rug $199 or more. Every shape, size, pattern, and color rug on sale now. Up to 56% off regular prices. The Progressive Rug Sale at Home World Rugs. A movement. We choose hope over fear. We kept fighting. Our work starts now. We are going to unite together. The time has come to turn the page. Tuesday. I know that I can do it. They want to be your president. Now, this is your chance to see if they have what it takes. The CBS News Democratic Debate. Tuesday, only on CBS. on the go, the CBS 3 mobile app. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Well, the warm spell has begun, and it's also starting to put the kibosh on what little bit of lake ice we've been managed to get here at the head of the lakes. Not so many ice anglers out this year, that's for sure. Lake usually hover around the shoreline near Duluth, catching the loopers and things like that. Well, the swarm spell is going to be with us through the weekend, and ice around the region likely will take a hit as temperatures run between 35, even 40 degrees for our daytime highs. Let's take a look at what's happening right now at the airport in Duluth as we eye up the current scene, the live picture going on in Ely there. It looks like a calm night in my hometown. Overhead here, well, it's on the clear side, thanks to the high pressure cell that's been with us for several days. And the current temperature is 30 degrees above zero. Westerly, southwesterly wind at 13 miles per hour is helping to push the heat into our region. And the high pressure nature of the cell, of course, is keeping the barometer readings on the higher side as well at 30.04 inches of mercury. This high will continue to dominate our weather, perhaps through Monday, then come Tuesday. Finally, a chance for some clouds, and by Wednesday, maybe even a little bit of light snow. And, you know, maybe even on Tuesday we have a chance as well, but not a great chance. Right now, current temps include 32 International Falls, a hair warmer towards Ibbing and Grand Rapids, 32 also Moose Lake, and in the 30s for the North Shore. 34 is what we have at Superior. The rest of Wisconsin goes from 32 to 36. And the Upper Peninsula, we're looking at current temperatures there, running about 34, 35 degrees, even 33 down towards Watersmeet is cooler but it's warmer than normal. And Besmer, you're in the same boat here. Hurley, Wisconsin, you're in the mid-30s there as well. And temperatures like this, like I mentioned here, are going to be sticking with us through Wednesday. Then it'll be a bit of a cooling process. Or I mean, Ash, Monday. A uh, slight cooling process begins on Tuesday, back towards normal. Doppler map right now, thanks to the high-pressure cell and control. Again, a clear sky around the area. Folks in the UP, well, even the lake effect snow machine has shut off there. I'll tell you, most of the country is being dominated, at least on the northern half, by high-pressure cells. And so it is high and dry from the northeast down into the middle part of our nation and up towards the northwest as well. And this is the way we're going to look through Monday probably. But into Tuesday, that's when a change in the weather could come our way. There's a Colorado low trying to take shape right now. And by Tuesday, Wednesday, its northern fringes might bring us a very slight chance for snow. And again, it looks like a very slight chance. Looks like this thing is going to stay to the, our south. Up in our neck of the woods then, about the best we manage is a 30% chance for light stuff. Forecast here tonight, Minnesota-wise, low temps, 10 to 17 above. Clear to partly cloudy sky, and it'll be that way in Wisconsin, Michigan as well, with low temps there, 14 to 18 above. Tomorrow, Saturday, Wisconsin, Michigan, when you're down at the Berkey, you're looking at... 36 to 40 for your high temp with a mostly sunny sky, perhaps too warm for skiers. And in Minnesota, again, up my neck of the woods, Ely, sled dog race going on. Uh, 50 years worth of that they're celebrating. Uh, mid to upper 30s for temperatures in Minnesota as well. And with the extended forecast, it stays sunny and warm through Monday. Then that low teases us come Tuesday, Wednesday with a cloudier sky and a 30% chance for light snow. And as we emerge from that by next Thursday, a little bit cooler than normal, overnight low of 5 above, and a daytime high of 20. Looks good. Thanks, Dave. Most paramedics stay on the job for about four years. That's according to the Mayo Clinic. One local EMT has been serving his community for almost 45 years, and he has the awards to prove it. CBS 3's Emma Quinn shares what keeps him going. Roger Swore has been coming to work at the same place for a long time. He's a paramedic for the Mayo Clinic Ambulance. With Mayo Clinic 43 years and total 45 years. In those many years, he's earned many accolades. The most recent in Washington, D.C. Uh, Congressman Stauber recognized me on the floor of the uh, House of Representatives. He heard about how long I had been a paramedic and he found out I was the longest serving paramedic in Minnesota. Swar goes on 8 to 12 calls a day. He's delivered 14 babies in his career, and no matter how the day goes, he keeps coming back. I always reflect on it and always come back and say, you know what, somebody needed the help, I was there. And who's better? And the guy has been here for 45 years. He's worked with some colleagues for almost 20 years. And uh, yeah, even after all of those years, he's still got a smile on his face and he's here early and ready for work. And yeah, he's, a, he's um, a great role model, I would say. And he doesn't plan on stopping to work for anytime soon. That's if my, uh, my walker gets caught up with my patient's walker, that's the time to retire.
as you can imagine, Spore has been on many, many calls over the years, and some of the babies he's delivered now have children of their own. His sister-in-law is also working toward becoming a paramedic. All right, Neil's here to talk about sports and big hockey games happening. I feel like we get to say that every yeah. night lately. Well, for sure, but... this upcoming weekend is going to yes. be pretty crazy. But uh, as, of course, the CAC girls hockey team, they look to punch their ticket to the state title game for the first time in 15 years. Highlights from their semifinal matchup against War Road coming up right after the break. Charge your phasers for Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Find heroes and icons only on My9. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me in my classes when I must give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting nationalguard.com. At Lift Pro International, we have custom design and fabricated lifting, weighing, and rigging solutions for more than 40 years. With a worldwide presence and reputation, we need world-class insurance to map. This is why we trust Cindy of Vernon Insurance to make sure we're fully covered no matter where in the world we're doing business. Protect your home, vehicle, or business, and your peace of mind. Call Cindy at Vernon Insurance today. America's most watched network. Tonight, starting at 7, only on CBS3 Duluth. Then, stay tuned for CBS3 News at 10. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW. Cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. Sports are my passion and the love of my life. And when you watch a sports cast, the biggest compliment that I get is that you seem so excited about what you're talking about. And that's not an act for me. Who doesn't want to see someone, you know, deliver their news in a fun way? So if you love it, I love it. You're gonna see you're, you're gonna see the authenticity that I think I bring to CBS CBS3 Sports. <laughs> Watch Sports with Kelly Hinseth on CBS3. When a crisis strikes, cash is the best form of relief. It can easily be transformed into health services, water, food, or clothes. Cash can travel everywhere and aid people all around the world. Donate. Smart. Fast. Donate cash. I want people to tune in and I want them to see a friend because I'm a mother and I know how hard it can be. You're doing all these things and then you have the child and then no one talks to you about how lonely it can be. You know, who do you lean to? Who do you connect with? This segment is very important to me because I get to work, but I also get to work on my passion. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with Leanne Valdez on CBS 3. Watch Anthony Mack weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS 3 Duluth. It's been 15 years since the Cloak Asco Carlton girls hockey team had an opportunity to compete for a state championship. And today all the team needed to do in order to achieve that was get past War Road in the Class A state semifinals. Less than five minutes to go in the first. Lumberjacks get on the board first. Taylor Nelson with the wraparound and backhand. CEC takes the 1-0 lead. She wasn't finished because a little over two minutes later, Nelson from the blue line, an absolute missile to the back of the net. Lumberjacks would take a 2-0 lead after one. A back and forth would ensue after that. But two goals by Kiana Bender in the third would prove to be the difference maker. Cloquet Esco Carlton is moving on to the state title game. They'll face Breck on Saturday. You no, know, we've been um, just program looking at our program um, 
we've been working the last five years to really grow our numbers. And, um, you know, you look at five years ago, we had four JV players. Um, we were going to the middle school and asking kids if, if they knew what hockey was and if they'd be willing to come out. And we literally had players who we had to buy gear for to come out for a JV. Um, playing in the state cha championship game certainly is going to help that. Um, and we're so fortunate to have such a great community. Um, you look at, uh, I know I keep going back to this, but I think it speaks to itself. We had five send-offs, you know. Um, there's some programs who didn't even have any. Um, so we are so fortunate enough to have just so much community support, and I think that's just going to continue to rally behind our girls' program and, and hopefully continue to grow the numbers. In other high school hockey news, Hermantown standout Blake Biondi has been named a finalist for the Mr. Hockey Award in Minnesota. Biondi is one of ten players up for the award. In 25 games this season, the future Bulldog has 37 goals and 39 assists. Speaking of future Bulldogs, joining Biondi as a finalist is Andover's Wyatt Kayser and Eden Prairie's Ben Steves. The winner will be announced on March 8th in St. Paul at the 36th annual Mr. Hockey Awards Banquet. Also announced today were the finalists for the Frake Brimsek Award, an award given to the state's top senior goaltender. Grand Rapids goalie Carter Clafton is one of three finalists. Clafton has played in 25 games this season and has a goals against average of nearly two. He's also stopped 93% of the shots that have come his way. That award will also be announced on March 8th, and he's gearing up for a big game. They're, they're playing uh, Elk River Zimmerman over across the street yeah. here at Amsoil tomorrow in one of the semifinal matchups. So much hockey this yeah. time of year. It's Players in our region are big. really showing up this That's season. That's right. Four big ones tomorrow, too. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Neil. Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, for the first time in nearly four decades, there's a new keeper at Split Rock Lighthouse. Hayes Scrivens took over in November. Now, with the tourism season looming, we take you inside the iconic North Shore landmark to show you what Scriven's plans are for the future of the site and why he says he's the best person for the job. That's your story, It Tony. is my story, you yeah. You had a beautiful it's, day shooting yeah. that, too. We went wow. up there on... Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday and shot the story. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, if you accidentally skipped breakfast, like a muffin or bagel this morning, no need to worry because today is actually National Grain Free Day. But you can load up your mealtimes with plenty of fruits and veggies instead. Grains like wheat and corn are common culprits of a food allergy or autoimmune disease like celiac. Sufferers say as a result, mealtimes can feel isolating. So National Grain Free Day was founded last year to recognize the challenges of a restricted diet. You can honor it by gathering your family around the dinner table for a delicious grain-free meal. All right, Dave, with the forecast, we might need to gather around the beach, get yeah. some suntan oil this weekend. <laughs> yeah, hopefully things work out for yeah. the outdoor events we have this weekend because uh, think about what Kristen mentioned this morning. Even though it was cold at the ground, the air was warm and it wasn't bad. So hopefully it works out that way for things like the Berkey tomorrow. And the snow doesn't melt away before folks can get out and ski on it. Warm spills with us Saturday through Monday. Sunnier sky, high temps in the mid to upper 30s. 40 not out of the question. Then reality starts to return Tuesday and Wednesday with our next chance for what looks like right now, the light snow. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.